In this episode of Super Sicento, I'm going to drum up some new rear brakes. Miller Corner here, welcome back to Super Sicento. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing with the performance mods before my car starts getting faster. Now, if you remember, in the first Super Sicento episode of 2018, we upgraded the front brakes with some Punto GT calipers, discs, and uprated pads. Today, we're going to be focusing on the rear brakes. Now, initially, I thought about doing a rear drum to disc conversion, but having spoken to people who've done it in the past and who've got it on their cars at the moment, it's not really worth doing on a Sicento or a Cinquecento because it's very difficult to source the parts because they come from really quite obscure Fiat's and Alfa Romeo's. It's quite expensive to source them for that exact reason and it's kind of difficult to make it work. Plus most of the braking is done on the front anyway so you don't really need massively uprated rear brakes and apparently it adds quite a lot of pedal travel before anything happens. If you're not building a track car, a drum to disc conversion on your Cento just isn't worth doing. So instead today we're going to be putting on some brand new and slightly uprated rear shoes as well as some brand new rear drum and I thought that since it's quite a common thing to do for most basic small cheap cars I'm going to do a little tutorial on how you can change your drums and shoes for your rear brakes. Start by jacking up your car or putting it on a lift. Then remove your wheels, I'll only be showing you one side by the way, before slackening off your handbrake cable to make shoe removal easier. Next remove the bolt that secures the drum, then pull the drum itself off. Depending on its age and how long it's been there, it might require a little bit of strength and a few love taps to do so. With the drum off, the shoes are exposed. Start their removal by using a screwdriver or similar tool to release the securing clips. This then allows you to remove the pin it's clipped into. Next, drop the pin. Oh bugger. Pick the pin up and then it's onto the springs. These keep your shoes located and have quite a bit of tension in them. Grab one end with some pliers and using equal degrees of care and strength, release one end of the spring by pulling further apart and then lifting it out. The spring then should be easy to remove and you'll have to do this twice for the upper and lower springs. It's worth remembering at this point to keep all the bolts, clips, springs and so on safe and keep track of where each and every one goes. With the springs and clips removed, the old shoes can be pulled out. They're often well seated though and getting them around the hub can be a tight fit. A bit of careful wiggling and perseverance later though and the old shoes are clear and removed. Next grab some brake cleaner. Use a pump up bottle for extra gains and use it to spray all over your brake assembly. Leave nothing dry as cleaning properly now means you'll have no dirt, brake dust or any other unwanted mess in your brakes. Make sure you've got a bucket, bin or similar below to catch the brake cleaner though. You'll be surprised how much crap comes off. With it left for a couple of minutes, use a clean dry rag to wipe everything down and behold your clean brake assembly. Then the hub grease cap comes off and it's time for copper grease on all the protruding areas. Much like when greasing the sides of brake pads, this prevents brake squeal and makes them easier to remove when required. To make new shoe installation easier, the hub is then removed using a 30mm socket. Carefully remove the hub and then put it somewhere safe and clean unless you plan on replacing it. Then the new shoes can easily be slotted into their designated grooves and they fit perfectly. Rather than stretching the incredibly tight spring across two shoes, it's slotted into both of them while one of them's out and the other shoe then stretches the spring out to slot into place. This does require an awful lot of strength and care but it's considerably easier than attempting to stretch the spring across from one shoe to the other. Now the springs in, the locating pins can be slid through from the back and the clips secured to lock the shoe down. With all the other securing bits locked in, the second spring is relatively easy to stretch into place and then the hub can go back on. Check it for any dirt and anything else unwanted before slotting it back on with a firm push to get it all the way back. The massive central nut can then be done back up to secure it. Next the grease cap can be tapped back on and then the new drum can be cleaned. As with new discs, drums are oiled to preserve them in storage but as you can probably work out, you don't want oil on your brakes and you should use some brake cleaner to get it all off. With the new drum prepped, it can then be fitted. The shoes might need slight inwards a bit to give it enough clearance but once it's all adjusted to suit the drum should slide on even and be uniform all the way round. That's good. I showed in the previous video why I'm leaving my drum locating bolts off but unless you're fitting spacers like me the bolts can be done back up and just like that you've got new drums and shoes. Next I go up in the car to get the handbrake adjusted. I see how many clicks it takes to lock the rear wheels and to push the new shoes in tighter and strengthen my handbrake my dad's on the ground tightening the adjuster in. It takes some fiddling and more adjustment but soon we get the strength of the handbrake up and it's down from 10 clicks to lock the rear wheels to just 4. Three. Four. I can't physically move them. 
Right, okay, so we reckon that might be done then. Now the handbrake is adjusted out and works better than ever, my dad gives his theory on why it was so ineffective beforehand. I think the shoes have probably glazed over with age, because the back brakes on this don't do much anyway, and I reckon that they've glazed over and they become hard. There isn't much bite on them. However hard you pull against them, it's like glass. You're not really going to win. But you will now that you've learned how to replace brake shoes and drums on your car. So there we have it, in just an afternoon we've managed to put brand new drums and shoes on both rear sides of the Super Seicento. I've taken it out for a quick test drive and it immediately feels better, sharper and more responsive under braking and it's had the added bonus of improving the frankly crap stock Seicento handbrake so that it's actually reasonable and you don't need to have the strength of the incredible Hulk just to pull it on. I cannot recommend enough uprating your rear shoes and putting new drums on, it's totally transformed what might well be the original drum brakes from my my car. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've now learned how to change rear drums and rear shoes on the back of any basic cheap car. It's definitely improved the braking on the Super Seicento and this little beast is well on its way to being capable of taking the power that's in store for it. That's a story for another day but for now thanks for watching everybody I really really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did give it a big old thumbs up and also subscribe and hit the bell icon so you are notified when a new Super Seicento video is released. But thanks once again for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. See you soon and have a good one.